Today on New England Living, get ready to get inspired with a look at some small businesses making a big impact. Like a boat builder turned sculptor, creating masterpieces for galleries and artists across the world. A Massachusetts-based water brand empowering women and girls across the planet. And a local casting company with an internationally renowned resume. It all starts right now on New England Living. New England has a style all its own. The people. The history. The culture. Join us as we discover the faces and places, the design and destinations, everyone and everything that makes New England extraordinary. I'm glad I discovered it now. Love the place you call home with New England Living. Thanks for joining us today on New England Living. I'm your host, Rachel Holt. He's responsible for building some of the most iconic art sculptures in the world, but chances are you've never heard of him. We're heading to East Providence, Rhode Island to meet the man behind Amaral Custom Fabrications. For over 20 years, Paul Amaral has been taking sculpting to new heights. You work with large scale artwork, so it makes sense that your warehouse is massive. Yes. What goes on in here? Everything from uh, cutting metal, welding metal, grinding metal, painting. We also do fiberglass, wood, anything that you could imagine a sculpture would be made out of. But we've got lots of ceiling space here and lots of room to move around and make a mess. And that's what we do every day, make a mess. <laughs> Let's talk about your background because you grew up in a farm nearby in Seekong. Yep. How does that play into what you do now? The most important skill that you have when you're a farmer is that you do a little bit of everything. You don't have the cash to go out and find a mechanic to fix the tractor. You have to fix it yourself. And uh, when the back stairs crumble and you need new concrete stairs, you're mixing concrete and making forms and pouring it yourself. We had a lot of craftsmen in my family and I just enjoyed always working with my hands and I've done a million different kinds of things from hot rods to bass guitars to sculpture. So it, it thrills me to no end to take my skills and, and see them on the world stage. Now we're seeing Amaral Custom Fabrications, but this didn't start out like this. How did you get into this? Uh, that's an interesting one. I um, worked for a boat builder in Rhode Island. They were peculiar in that they built mostly aluminum or metal boats. And there was an artist that decided he needed to find a metal boat builder to build his sculpture. And he walked in the door one day with a maquette, which is the art term for a model. Asked us, can you build this? And we looked at it and we thought, why would anybody want a 50-foot spoon with a cherry at the tip? Yeah, we can build it and sort of giggled and laughed about it. But that is at the Walker Rock Museum in Minneapolis, and it's a very iconic piece of the 20th century. So that was a big deal for us to go from building sailboats for the world's top people, Ted Turner and Dennis Connors, to building sculpture for Klaus Oldenburg. Because of building sailboats, we really paid attention to strength and durability, corrosion resistance. When you're building a sculpture and you say you want it to be here in 500 years, then you really have to be serious about how you approach fabrication. Artists like Roy Lichtenstein, Keith Haring, they come to you and they ask you to help them with their artwork. What is it like working with artists like that? It is a lesson in humility. They ask me to be their hands and their eyes and build their sculpture for them. Um, it pleases me to know and to uh, have that opportunity. What are some of the sculptures around the world that you've been a part of? Oh boy, um, how long you got? Uh, just about every time you see a Keith Haring sculpture outside of any kind of size, we probably built it. But I've done almost 500 pieces by Keith Haring. Our history with Lichtenstein is also impressive. We've got a, a sculpture behind us all wrapped up and ready to ship. It's a grouping of six sculptures, so I call it six sculptures. So uh, there's a lot of groupings, but I've done over 80 pieces for the Lichtenstein Foundation and Roy Lichtenstein personally. 
Is there one sculpture in particular, I know it might be hard to pick just one, that you're especially proud of? Yeah, one of the lesser known sculptures that was a very difficult one for us to build, and it's right here in Massachusetts, in Lowell, Mass. It's called Hydro, and it's sort of a reflection about water tumbling over the water wheels of Lowell industrial world back in 100 years ago. So it's this tumbling stainless steel arcs and spirals and things. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I have to be honest with you, before we came here today, before we met you, I didn't realize that when you see a sculpture, it's not necessarily the artist that put that sculpture there. Most people think that way, but you gotta think that when it gets to a scale where you need many hands to build, it's probably best to step back and contract someone to do it. So that's kind of what we do. We are an atelier of, of craftsmen who can listen to an artist and understand what they want and give them what they want. And most of these large-scale sculptures are built by people like myself. Something that's so fascinating is some of these artists that you're producing artwork for currently have passed away. So how does that work? Yeah, you know, um, in the case of, let's say, Keith Haring, he had time at the end of his life to organize. And he gave instructions, and this cardboard model will be made into these sizes and this edition number. And those instructions went over to the foundation and they have the models and they said, okay, let's build these as needed. And the same thing with Lichtenstein, Roy Lichtenstein. He uh, happened to pass on a little bit prematurely. They had the similar sets of instructions from Roy. So, you know, some of these artists do know how to plan ahead. This is a Keith Haring that we built probably about 15 or 18 years ago. Her name is Julia. She has a name. Yes, she has a name. This is Julia. This went to auction this past summer. Somebody's purchased it and they decided they wanted a completely fresh paint job on it. So sent it all the way from the country of Liechtenstein so that we could refurbish it and put a new coat of paint on it. So the next one that we have here are two Lichtenstein sculptures that came in from Philadelphia. We built these in about 2003. We installed them probably around 2005, and they're just coming back for some renovations. Our job is to get all the corrosion off of it and repaint it and send it back to Philadelphia and reinstall them. To have aluminum out in the weather for that long and looking the way it does is pretty remarkable. Aluminum is a tough material to keep from corroding. Going back to the marine industry, we use marine aluminum, which is very corrosion resistant, and then the paints are all from the marine industry, so this is uh, part of what are we known for. We're known for paint jobs that last for a very long time. What is blowing my mind right now is people have paid millions and millions of dollars for Lichtensteins and we can just turn around and there's one right behind us. Yeah, and, and I didn't charge millions of dollars for it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fabrication. As long as it sits in this shop, it is not a piece of artwork. It is a very fancy fabrication. As long as it's here, it's not worth millions, but it soon will be. It goes out the door and it's worth a fortune. There is nothing produced today that will be an antique in 100 years. That is really sad. We're not making heirlooms anymore. Something made with your hands that gets passed down through the generations. What could be better than that? Coming up after the break, it's box water with a heart. We're heading to Massachusetts South Shore to meet the two women behind the brand. 